All right, see, that's what I get for um, <laughs> trying to plug in a commercial. It's not Tubi. It's like an HBO Max. I should have just not done that because I actually I hit the uh, end button. So this is just going to be a part two continuation of I'm not adding this shit together. You serious? Now, we get another good scene here with Christine waking up in the middle of the night and looking under her bed and stuff, which is effective because who hasn't had that happen? Who hasn't done that as a kid? thinking that there's something under your bed. I know I have. Like, done the exact same thing. Just, you, you fucking just look, and you get out, you partially get out of bed, and you look under your bed just to see, and it's scary as shit when you're a kid, because you still, you're still not fully developed, I guess, mentally, to know that this is all bullshit. And that there's no such thing as monsters and ghosts and all that stuff. So it's a very effective scene because it reminds me of being a kid and, like, actually being afraid of that shit and looking under your bed or in the closet or, like, anything like that. And then we have the whole thing that there's somebody standing behind the door and she's pointing and saying, like, to her sister, like, there's somebody there and she doesn't see anything. What would have been better is if we actually saw something, like, that would be better and scarier, but there's nothing there. <laughs> and then we get a fucking jump scare with the fucking door shutting, and it's a good scene. They could have handled... I don't know why I keep doing that. We, They could have handled it better. Like I said, they could have at least had something there. Like, had something standing in the shadow. Things like hereditary. Like, when... Um, the sun comes down the stairs and you just see and they bring no attention to it. You see in the fucking dark room, you just see one of the naked cult members. And again, no attention drawn to it. Your eyes have to find it. Perfect. They could have done something like that here. But they didn't. And so it kind of takes away from the scene for me. And then she ends up saying that they, she heard somebody say that they want the family dead. That's when you take your daughter to... A, see a doctor, or, or you believe her, and you get the fuck out of this house. And, of course, no one ever does. Now, we see the Warrens with some other couple saying that they think their house is possessed or haunted and that there could be noises in the pipes and stuff. And Lorraine says that most of the time there's a rational explanation. Yet these people have done a thousands of cases whether it all ended up being fucking actual hauntings or demonic possessions and all of this. Yet, most of the time, it's a rational explanation, she says. So, f she don't even follow her own advice. I mean, they found thousands of cases of real, actual paranormal stuff. Yet, most of the time, it's, it's just bullshit. It's just noises in the house, the house settling, pipe noise... Like, really? Like, it, this is where it makes no sense, and you see the bullshit completely from the Warrens. And I'll also make a note that in that scene in the room with the girls, with Christine and her sister, and they sh finally scream when the door shuts, the parents are up like motherfuckers, and they are running right to that room. They hear them screaming, the whole house does. Just a point to make for something later. And now it's later. The mom is awake, and all the picture, pictures and frames on the, stair, on the staircase all crash to the fucking ground and make such a loud noise, but yet nobody wakes up. Nobody hears this. It's just her that hears this noise of at least seven, eight picture frames falling down and crashing to the ground and breaking. But yet everybody woke up just a little bit ago, like, just from the girl screaming. So no one heard this. That's absolute bullshit. And then she's hearing the claps, and she's screaming, who is that? And, so, and again, no one hears this. No one wakes up. Like, does she give her whole family Ambien at night to make them, like, really pass the hell out and sleep that they can't hear shit? But then again, like I said, they were all right there after the door shut, and Christine was screaming. And then we had the whole basement scene that they find out that there's an actual cellar 
in the house that they didn't know about. And there's boards that they took out, and he's, the father said he's going to look into it. And we get a cool little scene here when the mom is looking down into the basement. Uh, then she gets trapped down there, and it's, it's another tense scene. It's well done. But, again, just the whole fact that no one heard this just takes me out of it. Like, it really does. Like, when I pay attention to, like, stuff like that, it really takes me out of the movie. The fact that no one heard any of this noise, the mom falling down the stairs, none of this. And then finally, I mean, the dad comes and rescues her from the basement. But then, again, like I was saying earlier, with the armoire and stuff, like being kind of like the heart of all this, the basement is also shown to be like the hot spot. So there's multiple hot spots of the paranormal shit going on, I guess. Like, I don't know, Andrea uh, per Peron, that's the name. Andrea, if you see this, let me know. Where was the heart of this house? Was it the basement? Was it the armoire? This is the true story, right? You live this, so answer these questions for me. I would love to hear them from you. And then we have another jump scare, but it's, it's not egregiously bad. It's pretty well done. When the mom is in the basement, she's trapped down there, and then she lights the match. And then you hear the ghost of uh, Rory or whatever say, hey, you want to you wanna play the, the game of clap? Uh, then you get the hands clap behind her and the lights go out. It's, it's a good jump scare. Like, it's effective. It's creepy. Like, it's a good, they do a good, good job with that. But again, like, this is the point where you get the hell out of the house, right? Like, this woman just was in the basement with knowing that it's not her kids, it's not her husband, and saw these hands clap behind her. And and this isn't suspicious at all. This isn't scary in one one bit. This isn't something that you say to your husband and say, "We got to leave this house. I just saw some shit." No, like this is this happens in so many movies. It's like, do the do demons have, like, think Cabin in the Woods when they're able to pump like uh, chemicals into the air that makes them want to stay together and not split up somehow, because that's one hell of a specific fucking chemical. But do demons have the same thing? Like a retardation chemical that they pump out so that people don't make rational decisions and they just say, ah, that, I'll just shake that off and stay in this house. I'm guessing they do, because nobody would stay in this house after this woman experienced what she did already. The scene with the armoire, when the, the daughter's sleepwalking again, and she's banging her head against it, and then the doors are open, and then they look up and they see that just demonic girl or woman up there, and she jumps off of it. That's a great scene. Very well done. I saw a movie, what the hell was it called? Was it just called Doll? It's like a, a foreign film that basically rips off a a Annabelle. Like, a hundred percent. And they use the exact same scene. Like, the exact same shot. Like, there's same way, it's filmed the same way in everything. Like, as soon, the, it's like they're looking here, and then they pan up, and there's some demon thing up there, and it jumps off of, like, a closet or an armor or something like that. Same exact thing. It's called Doll. And then there's, like, a Doll 2, and I think there's a third one. They're actually not too bad, <laughs> like, for ripping off this movie and the Annabelle series and all that. They're not too bad. I forget who directed it, but I'll remember or I'll put it in the description or something. But they're not, like, really worth going to check out. But just in case people are big fans of The Conjuring and want to see, like, more of that same stuff, even though it's, like, completely ripped off, Doll, Doll 2, and then there's a third one by him, so... You can check those out. Now, we see the Warrens again in this classroom, showing footage of what we find out later in The Nun is Frenchie, and that he was possessed and everything, and showing the exorcism on him. And Ed Warren says that he had a third, third grade edu education, but he spoke some of the best Latin that he's ever heard, sometimes backwards. Now, Latin is a... It's a dead language. Like, no, nobody knows what good Latin or bad Latin is. Like, <laughs> whether it's backwards or not. So, that's, none of that makes sense. And then they ask 
one of the one of the classmates, the one of the students asks, did you personally perform the exorcism? And he says, no, he's not authorized to do that. But yet we see him do an exorcism at the end of this movie. So there's so many things that just make no sense. And again, <laughs> I don't want to keep repeating shit, but it's hard not to, like watching this movie. Um, the mom ends up going to this uh, this class and watches Ed and Lorraine and stuff, showing the whole thing with Frenchie. And then she approaches uh, Ed and Lorraine and says, there's something going on in the house, and can you come check it out? And again, he says, Ed tells her that it's usually a rational explanation. Yet these fuckers have found thousands of actual cases. Come on, man. Like, if you think of the odds of that, that they found actual cases, thousands of them, but most of the time it's a rational explanation. And what are these people? They had to have seen, what, a few hundred, a hundred thousand of cases in order for a few thousand of them to be legit? They went around seeing hundreds of thousands of people. Like, <laughs> again, it's so fucking stupid. And damn, man, they got all girls. Like, they didn't have one boy. And that's pretty remarkable. They got like five daughters. I don't know, just something to mention. And now I know a lot of this video, and, well, the part one and part two is harping on uh, the Warrens. And people are going to say, don't speak ill of the dead and all that. They're fucking dead, so they don't hear me. So it really doesn't matter. <laughs> so I'll say whatever the hell I want about them. I'm not speaking ill of them. I'm just saying that they were full of shit. But damn it, uh, Vera Famiga and Patrick Wilson just kill it in this movie. They really do. Like, I, I, the best performances, obviously. I mean, nothing against the other actors and actresses. Like I said, everyone does a good job in this. But uh, especially Vera Famiga, she just kills it in this and everything that she's in. I love her so much. Now, Ed starts recording their conversation with the parents. And right before that, he says, with everything that's been going on in the house, why don't you guys just move? So he says this, and then just a little bit later, he says, moving wouldn't help. Like, it's like uh, stepping on gum. It follows you. And, I mean, he's right. It is hard as shit to get rid of gum. <laughs> but he just said, why don't you move? And then says that it doesn't matter if you moved. So, again, just, like, contradictions all over the place with the rules and everything. Now, the scene with Lorraine... And the little girl with the music box. When she's looking into the music box and the reflection. First of all, the three times stuff that we see in so many movies. I wish they would change that up. Like, whether it's a movie that they're trying to break a door down. It's always on the third try that it opens. In movies like this, it goes three times. It goes two times. She doesn't see anything. And then the third time, she sees the ghost of Rory behind her. Like, in the reflection, it's so predictable. Like, it really is. Like, it's a good scene, but it's like one, two, uh, yep, and then three, we're going to see something. It's like, it's so obvious. It's, it's, it's always the third time. But when she sees Rory in the reflection, and then she looks back at the door, it's not reversed. Like, she's looking into a mirror. But yet she sees Rory's ghost in the reflection. And then when she looks back, it's exactly the way that she saw it in the music box mirror. So th it wasn't reflected like it should be. So that's something I guess I didn't pay attention to. And the scene when the Warrens go outside and Lorraine is right by the tree. And then uh, Ed asks her what's wrong and she s we see the person hanging, like the ghost of, of Bathsheba, hanging there and we see the legs and stuff like that that Lorraine sees, that's cool. Like, it's well shot, it's effective, it's pretty fucking creepy. They do a good job with that. So yeah, we get that scene with the Warrens explaining what's going on here. And Lorraine said that she's seen this dark entity right when she walked through the house. Like, walked into the house for the first time. And saw it behind the mother. And then saw it again behind the kids. We didn't see any of that shit. I mean, it's, this is flashbacks. So, I mean, that would have been very pertinent information, right? 
that like she would have said like right away because that's what I would do if I was her like as soon as I walk in and I see a fucking demonic entity attached to the mother I would pull them all aside and be like all right yeah I just saw <laughs> I just saw a demon behind you so yeah everything you're saying this is actually happening but no she waits until she sees this ghost bitch hanging from a tree then tells the family and then this is when he says that like it's like stepping on gum you take it with you yet he advised them earlier so why don't you just move so I don't know and then they're 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 gonna have uh, somebody like take a look at the property and like the history of it and everything that's how they find out about Bathsheba and that she was hung there and that she, she hates that the fact that people take her land when they move on to her onto this land and so she possesses them because of that like they mentioned that uh, like a maid was was killed but like i guess the homeowners are fine like <laughs> they're the ones who like took the land like, or, like took the land whatever the hell you want to call it they're the ones who moved in but the, but the maid was the one that deserved to die? Like, see what I mean? There's just so many things that it's like, that make no sense. Like, that there's no attention paid to, like, paid to it. There's no, that, I don't know. It's 6.30 in the morning. Fuck you guys. I can't think. But yeah, like, it makes, there's so many things that don't make sense. And yeah, it's a movie about demonic possession. But like I said, we've seen this done so much better in so many other movies. And just, not to keep bringing The Exorcist up, but, excuse me, we have The Fucking Exorcist. Like, done one of the most perfect movies ever made. And the Demonic Possession movie. And it's handled so well, and everything makes sense in it. Here is just shit thrown in just to make it creepy. And it, there's no explanation behind it. Like, the whole reason that this Bathsheba demon supposedly is possessing, trying to possess the mom here, is because they moved onto her property. And that's taking her land in some way. But you know, the, the maid, and then they mentioned some other, like a kid who drowned or some shit. Again, again, he didn't take the fucking land. His parents, the family moved in, and they're fa they were fine. Nothing happened to them. So, none of the whole motive for the demon makes sense in this movie. Actually, Andrea, if you ever see them, maybe you can explain. Maybe you can uh, tell me uh, what Bathsheba's uh, motives were for haunting your family. I would, I'd love to hear that. Discount Joseph Gordon-Levitt. All right, now I know the father said that they're not really church-going people. But he really had to ask what's in that bottle. He didn't know it's holy water. Like, does anybody have to ask that question? Like, if you're dealing with, like, so something like this, and you see a little bottle of water, instantly, it's, to me, it's, that's holy water. So, I don't know. Like, he, the fact that he had to ask that question, what, it's just a reason for Ed to explain that the presence of holy things will get a reaction from things that are unholy, right? Like, that's the whole reason that they even had that line. Right? Right. Yeah, when they rec when they turn the camera on and they start recording themselves going down into the basement and stuff, this is the 70s. That video looks so fucking crisp and clear and stuff. Like, there's no chance that a video like that and from the 70s with that equipment is looking that good. Not a big deal, like, but it's it's something I notice and it's it's kind of annoying. But oh, again, fucking Vera Famiga, she just kills it. Like, she's just so good in everything. I love that woman to death. And again, just the dynamic between Wilson and Farmiga is so good. Like, every scene with them together, absolutely kill it. Like, both of them. They just have such great chemistry, these two actors. And throughout all of these movies, all three of these movies, they do such a good job portraying the scam artist Warrens. The scene right after when they're talking, uh, the, the Warrens, and they're saying that they can get used to this and being in the country and everything, and saying that they have a beautiful family and that they have to help them. And then Ed leaves, and then the sheet flies up to the window, and Lorraine sees a figure in the window. That's cool. 
that like that's a cool shot when we see that ghost or whatever it is in the window like good job with that and now we start to see carolyn that's her name the mom <laughs> i'm so bad with remembering names in movies that i really don't care about much again i think this is a good film but i don't love it or anything so who the fuck remembers her name carolyn though and she comes out of the bathroom looks so disheveled and stuff and says that she's just feeling nauseous and then oh i hear the, i hear my family i gotta go Lorraine, she looks a little suspicious, obviously, but it's like, come on. Like, right then and there, it's like, yeah, the possession is starting to happen. So, I don't know. She doesn't, like, she doesn't react in a realistic way. She just kind of just looks at her and just accepts, like, all right, maybe she's feeling nauseous. After seeing all the stuff going on in this house. Like, I feel like they could have done the possession a lot earlier. Like, the, uh, not possession, the exorcism a lot earlier on her because she's obviously getting possessed or is possessed at this point already. So they they could have done better handling like when she gets actually possessed and stuff because she looks like shit when she walks out of that bathroom. Then we get the whole story of um, Frenchie's exorcism when um, Lorraine saw something that scared her so much that she ended up locking herself in the bedroom for eight days and didn't sleep or, or didn't eat for eight days. Yeah, get the hell out of here. There's no way. No one just doesn't eat for eight days and is fine. Like, you cannot go that long without food. All right, the whole scene with the skeptic guy who's there that, like, the Warrens know or works for the Warrens or whatever... Who doesn't believe in this stuff. Uh, then he sees the ghost saying, like, look what you made me do. And that her wrists are slit. And then, like, attacks him, basically. I'm out. Like, <laughs> right then and there. Like, that's all I need. If I was him, and I, like, I say I'm a skeptic. I saw that. I'm gone. Like, I don't give a fuck about this family. <laughs> like, I am getting out of this house immediately. Now that I know this shit's real. I would be so far gone from this house. It's not even funny. So they they captured on on audio another voice, the ghost of the kid, Rory, with, that's hanging out with Cindy and saying, this is where I hide and everything. You would think that that would be evidence right then and there that paranormal shit exists. But they never showed that to anybody after this. Like, nothing. Like, they just sat on that, that evidence. That, like, evidence of paranormal activity being actually real. That ghosts and demons exist. And they just decided not to show anything. Or show that evidence to anybody. I mean, again, like, it's... That's something that... That's a huge thing. Right? Like... <laughs> and they don't show it to anybody. They don't say a fucking word about this. Why? Because this shit never happened. And maybe, again... I know I keep calling you out, Andrea, I'd love to ask you that question. How come uh, they didn't do anything with the uh, audio recordings? Let me, I would love to hear an explanation for so much shit. The fact that when Lorraine falls down through the floor all the way to the cellar and she doesn't even break a bone, she doesn't even hurt herself in one bit, is, is so stupid. I mean, like, come on, man. You see how big of a fall that is that she went through just now? Like, she dropped, like, three floors down into the cellar. And she's just, like, dusty. Like, that's it? Like, get the hell out of here, man. That is such bullshit on every level. Again, though, the score in this movie is very good. Like, it's with most of James Wan's movies. He has very good at picking out composers for the score for the movies because all of these movies I can't think of one that has a bad score and it's very effective in certain scenes and like with this scene in the cellar when after she takes that fucking fall that does nothing to her another tense scene it's very well shot it's very well done like with her hearing the ghost saying she, that she made me do it and then seeing the ghost like right up in her face the makeup on the ghost, like, 
it looks like shit, but that's me coming from The Exorcist and stuff recently, so I'm going to mention how it just doesn't look good. Like, it, it really doesn't. Like, the effects on all the ghosts in here, like the one on top of the cabinet or the, the armor or whatever, looks all right, but it just it doesn't look great. Like, I, I know you can't compare this to the fucking Exorcist, like, obviously, but that's always going to be the gold standard for me. So anytime I see something like this in a movie like this and look at the makeup effects or just stupid CGI... It just does not look good, like, for me. It, but it is an effective scene. It's tense as hell. I don't like basements. <laughs> I really don't. They're creepy as shit to me. Especially ones like this, that, like, these types of cellars that, like, they're not, like, it, they're not, like, furnished or anything. They're not, like, redone. Like, it's just bare bones of a cellar. That's, those are creepy fucking places. I wouldn't go down there. So the whole scene of her down there is very effective, it's very creepy, and they do a good job with that. Again, though, the makeup kind of takes me out of it. When Lorraine hears Judy, her do their daughter, saying mommy, and then sees her daughter's body like floating in the, in the water, that's a great scene. That is, that's heartbreaking. Like, I couldn't imagine seeing an image or a, whatever the hell you want to call it, a vision of my daughter dead floating in the water. Dude, you have no idea how that would creep me the hell out. And then they end up calling home, and there is actually something going on there, and they race home, and then I'm not up to that yet. Again, I don't want to keep shitting on the Warrens, but they go to this priest... And show them pictures and stuff. And you see, like, the ghost of Rory behind, right behind the young girl. And he says, wow, you weren't kidding. Like, this is actually happening. And then Ed proceeds to say that he's never seen anything like this before. And neither is the, the priest that they're talking to. But yet they've seen thousands of cases of paranormal shit. But they've never seen anything like this. They've never seen a ghost. That's all it is. It's just a ghost behind a girl. I mean, there's other stuff that they've seen in the house, yeah. But that evidence that they show, like, it's just so weird that the, it's so stupid. Like, it really is. Just knowing that, just not knowing, but just the fact that they say that this is based on true shit. And uh, then having scenes like that, when we know that they've seen this before. <laughs> like, they've done thousands of cases. Is what they've, what, what we're told. And is what they said when they were still alive. And, oh, we've seen thousands of cases. And they got the whole room with all those objects and conduits and stuff like that. But yet they've never seen a picture. They've never seen a ghost. Like, just chilling behind somebody. Lorraine walked in the house and immediately saw something much more scary attached to the mom, to Carolyn. And then attached to the kids. And then she saw something hang. She saw the Bathsheba demon hanging from the tree but they've never seen anything like this they've never seen anything like a ghost like oh god i don't know and a bell on the run bell on the run annabelle's missing and then the parents uh the, you know the warrens end up coming home now the warrens lived in connecticut so i forget where the house was that the Perrons lived in. But I'm pretty sure it's far as fuck away from Connecticut. So they just happen to get home just in time. <laughs> before anything crazy happens to Judith here. To their daughter. I will say. The whole scene when they get home. Or right before they get home. When Judith's in, locked in the room. And there's the woman in the chair with Annabelle. Rocking in the rocking chair. And the... Annabelle's head twists around and looks at her. Uh, then she's banging on the door for her nana to wake up. And then they finally get home. And right before the chair gets thrown at the wall, Ed grabs Judith out of the way. And then she gives the line, there was someone rocking in the chair with Annabelle. Like, that's my favorite scene in the movie. Like, favorite scene in the movie by far. Like, it's, it's just so creepy with that woman in the chair with the doll. 
and just having their daughter being trapped in there has got to be terrifying like to be judith in that situation and just the way it's shot and the sound design is really good the score is great like when they use utilize it in the right places it's a very very good scene and it's my favorite in the movie like but by a long shot like that's my favorite scene and yeah warrens this is why you don't keep a room full of demonic shit in your fucking house when you have a daughter especially because that's what's going to happen you're going to have Annabelle on the loose, and you're going to have your whole house haunted, which we see in Annabelle Comes Home, which is just insane. The whole point that they kept a room of fake demonic shit is stupid, because none of this is true. But if it was, the fact that they keep a whole room full of this stuff, and see, she the daughter went in there. Like and she does too again, and Annabelle comes home, and I forget the timeline, so I don't want to be wrong on this and like knock it, but I forget when Annabelle comes home takes place, what year it does. So I don't know if that was before this movie. I no, it's not right. It's after because Judith's older, and Annabelle comes home, so it does come after. So she should know, in that movie. To not go in that room by any means because this shit happened to her when she was young <laughs> and it scared the hell out of her. So that whole movie is kind of like a whole question mark now because why in the world would she ever go in that room or let her friends in there or anything after she knows exactly what can happen, especially with, with the doll because of this whole thing that happened to her when she was younger. So... I don't, I'll talk about that in Annabelle Comes Home, but that's weird that she doesn't remember. That's kind of a hard thing to fucking forget. So, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. And, like, when we can finally see Carolyn possessed here and stuff, a great shot of her being, you know, pulled down to the basement, and she's holding on and stuff for dear life, and then she gets pulled away. It looks good, but the makeup on her, for like, being possessed, it looks terrible. Like, it really does. And I'm not even going to mention the movie that I talked about before, just to compare it, but even not comparing it to that, it, it looks bad. Like, it does not look good. And it's just, it doesn't, it's not effective. Like, it doesn't work for me. The whole look of her being possessed in this movie. And the possess the exorcism itself, which we're about to get to. But, like, uh, they could have done so much better with that. Well, I got that same ad that I accidentally stopped the video uh, before. <laughs> but uh, just so you know, Discover, they're not going to take it anymore. They got Twisted Sister playing in their commercial. So I don't know what the commercial's for, because they don't fucking really tell you. <laughs> it's just like a lot of commercials that just random shit happens, and you don't even know what they're advertising. But that's what I was trying to say last time at the end of the the previous video before I ended it. I guess not worth mentioning because it fucked the video up and now it's in two parts, but you know how I plug commercials, so that there you go. Discover, they're not taking it no more. Pos possession's going on. They need an exorcism. We gotta call Father Gordon because he's Ed Warren's not allowed to do uh, exorcisms. Oh, he's too far. He's not gonna make it. Fuck it, I gotta do it then. Come on. This is like, really, like, he really didn't need that guy at all. Because this was just gonna happen. And he knows how to do exorcisms. So he should just be doing exorcisms. Fuck the church. Like, seriously. Like, he really can't just do this on his own. He does it here. So, and then he, doesn't he do it? Well, Formiga does. Um, Lorraine does in the second movie. Gets rid of the demon, too, in the stupidest way, too. Well, I'll get to that in that movie. But, I don't know. The whole thing, the, there was no need then for that whole scene of them going and showing the evidence to the to the father and having it pushed to the Vatican. Because it just ends up with fucking Ed doing the exorcism himself. So, stupid. And this whole part of the exorcism before, like, we see her, like, facing it. And it's like, let's just throw a sheet on her. So we don't have to fucking do effects and, and, like, make her look possessed. That's exactly why there's a sheet on her head. Because they wanted to save money and not do and worry about effects on her. 
So let's just, that's, that's a good idea. If you ever can't do effects for a possession, just throw a fucking sheet over her head. And then there you go. You don't have to show anything. And it's another trope that we see in all of these movies with just birds that fly into the, into the house and just die. Because they're stupid birds? Like, I don't get it. Like, birds know how to fly very well. And they know not to just fly head first into a fucking building. <laughs> like, it happens every now and then, I'm sure. But we see this in every fucking demonic possession movie. Like, for decades now. And if I see another bird soon, I'm like, I can't. After the whole <laughs> the whole double feature of Birdemic 2 and Birdemic that me and, and some great people streamed the other night. That's enough birds for me. I mean, it's good to see, like, an actual bird and not, like, the cheapest fucking CGI bird that you've ever seen. But I don't want to see any birds for a while. But damn, man, Ed speaks some of the best Latin I've ever heard. When uh, Carolyn is possessed there and she's in the chair rocking and stuff and she spits the blood out of her mouth and it comes through the sheet, that's really cool. Like, that looks good. I like that. All right, now this is going to sound terrible because it is. But you guys should be used to me saying a bunch of terrible shit. And no, I'm sarcastic. I'm being sarcastic here. Just making a point. Couldn't they just kill her? <laughs> like the mom? Like seriously? Couldn't they just kill her? And then the demon would be gone? Because it can't possess her? And then the rest of the family would be fine. So like kind of like a sacrifice for her family? Couldn't they just like cut, the, cut her fucking head off? And like dismember her body like a deadite or something? And then they'd be fine. I don't know, just a point. I know it's terrible. I already said that, so that shit's off the table. I already said that it's bad. But it it is an option, right? Like, I'm pretty sure it is. But the whole thing with her, like, the, the chair levitating and then flipping upside down, that, that looks cool. Like, that looks really good. So there are some good things in this exorcism ending here. There's just a lot of dumb stuff, too. But... It's not terrible in any way. Like it, it, It's fun to watch. And then we finally see Carolyn with some makeup and stuff. It doesn't look terrible. It doesn't look bad. It just doesn't look good. Like, I know I've said that, but it's like, it just doesn't look great. It's, it's fine, but they could have done so much better with making her up looking possessed. But when Ed screams Bathsheba and Carolyn's face turns towards him and it's all possessed as Bathsheba that looks really good that's very fucking effective that's very creepy like the makeup there is very well done so uh, that's what I mean it's like they made that look good they could have made the rest look good like they could have made the effects on just Carolyn not Bathsheba's face just her own face they could have made it a lot better we see right there that they do a great job so I don't know and then the whole thing with the beach memory like when we, they saw the picture earlier Lorraine and she's talking to Carolyn and Carolyn saying that was like a great family memory and stuff like that first of all in that, in that picture it's just the family there you don't see water, you don't see sand, you, you just see the sky in the background. So, like, it's not even a picture of them at the beach. So, like, the whole thing of, like, Lorraine just reminding her of that memory and that's what gets rid of the demon? <sighs> I don't know, man. It seems so fucking dumb. But, yeah, like, what a stupid way to get <laughs> the fucking demon out of this woman. And then it's even dumber in the second movie when at the end how Lorraine banishes Valak. As you do, I know your name, and it's Valak. And then just by knowing her, the demon's name and saying it, gets rid of the demon. That's even more egregiously dumb. But the whole thing with the beach and that picture and who took the picture? Like, aren't they all in the picture? I mean, yeah, of course they could have asked somebody to take it, but that's just a little nitpick. But now she's fine, and the family's all happy, and they'll never remember any of this, because it never happened. And again, Andrea Perone, if you ever see this, you are completely 
absolutely welcome to come on the channel and talk with me about the true story here that you lived through. Because, like I said, I have a whole bunch of questions that you will not be able to answer because you know you're full of shit and this stuff never happened. Sorry, like, I don't mean to be a dick. It's just my opinion I'm voicing and I'm entitled to it. This is my channel. I'll say whatever the hell I want. Even if I didn't have a channel, I'd say the same shit. Like, you were full of shit. You were just trying to make money off your books and by going on literally any type of platform to just keep saying the same stuff. So, like I said, you open the invitation. Come on. I would love to speak with you about this whole experience you went through. And then Ed puts the, the music box in the d demon room with all the other things that are supposedly uh, conduit for demons. And... Then he says that they, the Vatican approved the exorcism and says nice timing. So, like, couldn't they get in trouble for, like, performing the exorcism without their approval? Like, isn't that a thing? Like, aren't they going to get, like, a lot of shit for that? No? Like, so what does it matter if they get approval from the Vatican at all? Like I said, he did the exorcism anyway. So why does that matter? Like... I don't know. It, 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 so many questions. There's just so many questions here. And just we end with some bullshit text said said by Ed Warren that anybody could just write something just as cool and sounding just as art articulate and demonic and that shit is out there that's evil and all that bullshit. Anyone could have wrote that. And then we just end with the music box twirling on its own and then we see nothing, which thankfully... Like, there's no stupid jump scare at the end, like there are in most of these movies. So, I mean, damn, 42 minutes plus a half hour. This is over an hour <laughs> of talking about The Conjuring. I mean, I know I was talking a lot about the warrants, too, and about the old true life case and all that stuff. So I'll just put that in the description, too. Like, there's a lot of talk about the warrants and actual demonic entities and everything like that. Which is cool, because it fits this whole theme for the month of Demonic December, and just talking about demons and paranormal stuff and the truth behind it or anything, which there isn't no evidence at all, ever. So, I don't know. So, that's The Conjuring. It's a good movie. Like, I know I've been shitting on it a little bit, but or a lot of it, <laughs> but it is a good movie. It's not something I put on often. If anything, I watch the second one a little more often than this one because I like it a lot more. I mean, like I said, the, the ending at the end, which is knowing Valak's name, is, is so retarded. Is a way, that's how they get rid of it. It's that easy to get rid of a demon. You just like, and in a lot of these movies, it's like if you just yell at a demon and shit and say, like, Gil, get out, go away. They just, they listen, and they, that's all you gotta do. Just yell at a demon, and that's its kryptonite, and it'll leave. Like, I don't know, man. Like, it's so, like, I don't even know the words for it at 6, that's 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> like, I don't know the words for it. Just the whole idea and of saying that this is a true story, or based on true events, which we hear in so many fucking movies that... And they're never fully based on the true thing. Like, it's just inspired by true... Like, Cocaine Bear that's coming out soon. Echo, if you see this. <laughs> that whole shit with Cocaine Bear. Yeah, of course, it's a movie. So it says based on true story. Yeah, we, we looked up the true story. Echo did. Some guy had too much cocaine in his ass, smuggling it into the country, and jumping out of a helicopter or something, or a plane or some shit, with a parachute... And for some reason, he had so much cocaine shoved up his ass that gravity just, it just dropped him to the ground. The parachute didn't work. And he died. And then a bear came and what, ate it out of his ass? And then, but he ate the cocaine, the bear, and he just keeled over and died. So he didn't go on no cocaine binge crazy killing spree <laughs> that they're advertising for that movie. So just the, every movie that puts in that is based on a true story. It's, it's, it, I hate that. Like, unless it's, like, an actual, like, true crime thing or, like, an actual event that really did happen that's grounded in reality. 
and it's an actual thing that happened. Like um, when I just did the girl next door recently, that was an actual case. And I, I actually looked into a little more on the case after I saw the movie. It was even more horrific what happened to that, that poor girl than they show in the film. So, I mean, movies like that, fine, with the whole based on true events. Putting it here in The Conjuring because of a story that was told by two people, the Warrens, that investigated this case and have zero evidence to prove any of this happened. Calling it a true story is just fucking bullshit. It's an absolute bullshit marketing ploy. Like, 100%. And I, I know I keep saying it. Andrea, you ever see this? Come on, I would love to tear you apart. Like, I really would. Like, because I have questions you will never be able to answer, and you will look like a fool, and you will look like you are absolutely lying about everything. So, that's The Conjuring. <laughs> I'll get to The Conjuring 2. I'm going back to sleep right now, because I well, slept early, and now I'm, I'm still tired, if you can't tell. Like, I can't even articulate my thoughts right. But... I'm going to bed, and after that, I'll watch The Conjuring 2, which I enjoy a lot more, like I said, and I will have a video up on that. So wherever you guys are from, hope you're having a good morning, afternoon, or night, and I will see you guys soon. Take care.